Hey guys, this is Test 37 Game 3. This is the Books on Shelves game. What makes this game difficult is that we've got categories of variables here. We have grammars, Farsi and Hausa, linguistic monographs, PNS, novels, V and W. So we have to consider the category into which each variable falls rather than just the variables themselves. Now they're nice here, they make things a little bit simple in that we have one slot for the first shelf, two for the second, three for the third. Ignore these other diagrams here, I'll talk about those later, just focus on this top one here for now. Anyway, we've got a couple of rules to diagram. The first one, at least one novel with the Farsi. The novels are V and W, so Farsi is with at least one of V or W. I put a box around them because they will be on the same shelf. You could of course make the notation that F is not on one, but it's pretty simple, I'm not going to bother doing that right now. Next, monographs are not together on the same shelf. Our monographs, our linguistic monographs, are P and S, phonology and semantics. So P and S are never horizontal together, they're never on the same row. Next rule, Vonnegut is not with either monograph, so we have Vonnegut here, not with P, not with S, because P and S are our monographs. So this is a pretty bare-bones setup. All we could really infer at the outset is that, you know, Farsi is not on shelf one. Pretty simple inference. Obviously, the LSAT wants to test more inferences than just that. So how can we make initial main diagrams for the game, multiple main diagrams, laying out the game's possibilities? Well, we might use this block of Farsi with the novels, Farsi with the V or W, but that actually gets pretty complicated because we could have Farsi with Vonnegut on two, Farsi with Wolf on two, you know, F with D V on three without W, F and W on 3 without V, or F, V, W all on 3. That's five different main possibilities. Now, you know, some of those can't happen, it turns out, but that's still a lot to think about at the outset. There is a better way to set this up. So what else do we have to use? I mean, if it's not this rule, it's got to be one of these. Now, actually, I believe the best way to set up this game is to use all of these, because basically, V, P, and S all conflict with each other. P cannot be with either S nor V, V cannot be with either P nor S, and S cannot be with P, and S cannot be with V. So V, P, and S are all separated among the three different shelves. None of those can be with each other. So on the bottom right here, I'm going to essentially list what is happening in a general sense. You know, none of V, P, or S could be on the same shelf as each other, so one of V, P, S is on one, one of them is on two, and one of them is on three. V, P, and S all spread among the three different shelves. Now, obviously, we don't want to leave it as vague as that. We want to make it a little bit more specified. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to take one of those three variables and place it on each of the three different shelves, on each of these one, two, three different diagrams on the left here. But which of V, P, and S should I pick? Which of those is not like the others? Well, V Vonnegut stands out because Vonnegut is the only one of those three that is not a linguistic monograph. Vonnegut is a novel. Additionally, Vonnegut is involved in the first rule of the game as a novel. Vonnegut could satisfy that Farsi rule from the outset. So Vonnegut is the one that I consider to be different. It's what I'm going to use to create the main diagrams. We could have V on one, V on 2, or V on 3. Those are my different three possibilities for the game. I use Vonnegut to create my three different initial main diagrams. Now, P and S, our two linguistic monographs, phonology and semantics, those two guys are essentially interchangeable in this game. There is absolutely no distinction made between them. They are both within the linguistic monographs category, and they are part of that thing where all of V, P, and S conflict with each other. So I'm going to treat them as interchangeable in making these diagrams. If Vonnegut's on one, P and S must be on both two and three. If Vonnegut's on two, P and S must be on one and three. And if Vonnegut's on three, P and S must be on both one and two. So I'm going to basically lay that out, you know, P slash S, S slash P, P slash S on one for the second diagram, S slash P on three, P S on one, SP on two for that third diagram. Now we have F, W, and H remaining. Those are the variables that we have not yet placed. So where are they gonna go? 
they're basically going to be in our remaining three slots for each of our remaining diagrams. We don't know exactly where they're going to go, but we can determine them a great deal, it turns out. So now that we've satisfied the rule that V, P, and S all conflict with each other, we've got F, W, H left to place, and all we've got to now satisfy is this F with one of the novels rules. So on the top diagram, we know that far C could not go on to because then it would not be with either V nor W. Therefore, far C must go on three with W, and then we will have H left on two. Now for the second diagram, far C could go with V on two, or it could go on three with W. We don't know which way it's gonna go. However, we can say that W will not go on, on two, because if W went on two, far C would not be able to go with either V or W. So for that reason, W must go on three, and then F could go on either two or three, interchangeable with F. Far C could go on two or three, interchangeable with H, I'm sorry. Now the bottom diagram, far C cannot go on two, because then it would be with one of S or P, it would not be with one of V or W. So F must go on three for this diagram, and then now that we satisfy the far C being with a novel rule, we know that W and H are basically interchangeable since we've already satisfied all the rules for this game, and this is our initial setup for the game. Question number 12, general orientation question. As always, the general best way to do this question is to take one rule at a time and apply that rule to all five choices looking for violations. So we can start with the fact that none of V, P, or S could be together on the same shelf. So we see on choice A, V and S are together, A is eliminated, B, none of V, P, S are together, we're okay, choice C, none of them are together, so we're okay, choice D, P and S are together, so D is eliminated, choice E, we have both P and S together on shelf three, so for that reason, E is eliminated. Down to B and C, we can now make use of the other rule that far C must go with at least one of the novels. In choice B, far C is with Vonnegut on two, but in choice C, far C and phonology, P are together, phonology is not a novel, so C is bad, leaving B by elimination. Question number 13, general cannot be true question. Obviously we cannot predict what they're gonna ask, we just gotta run through the choices. Choice A, grammar on one, we always have one of V, P, or S on one. That is, a, you know, we have a novel and a monograph. We never have grammar, so A is our answer to number 13. I will run through the others, though. L with H on the same shelf. We could, I'm sorry, a, monogra a linguistics monograph with the grammar. H is a grammar. Linguistics monograph is either P or S. So they're asking us, could we ever have H, P, or H, S together of course, that could easily occur in any of the three diagrams. In diagram one, it occurs on shelf two. Diagram two, it occurs on the bottom shelf, perhaps. Diagram three, it could occur on the second shelf. H could be with either P or S. So for that reason, B is gone. C, novel on the first shelf. Of course, we could have Vonnegut on one, so C is eliminated. D, novels with each other. The novels are V and W. We could have that occur on the bottom diagram, diagram three, V with W on the third shelf, so D is eliminated. E, neither linguistics monograph, meaning P or S, on the top shelf, of course. The second and third diagrams both have a linguistics monograph on one, so E is eliminated, leaving A as our answer to number 13. Next, number 14, general must be true question. Again, no way to predict, just run through the choices. A, linguistics, meaning P or S, and grammar, meaning F or H, on two. Must that be the case? Must we always have one of PS and one of FH on two? That occurs in the top possibility, and it could occur in the bottom possibility, but we could easily lack both F and H on shelf two, for example. On the third diagram, we could have W with P or S, meaning no neither of F or H. So A is eliminated for that reason. Additionally, for the second diagram, we could lack one of, we could lack both of P and S on shelf two. 
So for that reason as well, A is eliminated for 14. B, novel and grammar on the second shelf. Must we have one of VW on two, for example? No, in the top diagram, we lack both of VW. In the bottom diagram, we could lack both of VW as well. So for that reason, B is eliminated. Choice C, one of PS and one of FH, at least on the third shelf. We could lack both of PS on that bottom diagram. We don't need to have either one. They could be on only one or two. So for that reason, C is eliminated. D, at least one novel, meaning one of VW, and at least one grammar, meaning one of FH, on the third shelf. Well, we've always got to have one of the novels on the third shelf. Here we have W, here we have W, here we have V. But must we have at least one grammar, or could we lack both F and H? Well, we've got F on the top diagram, one of FH on the, on the second diagram, and then we have F, of course, on the third diagram. So yes, D is a must. We cannot avoid that. So D is our answer for 14. I will look at E, though. At least one novel and at least one monograph. Of course, we've got to have a novel. We just established that. But must we have at least one monograph? No, we could lack both P and S in the third diagram, where we have V on three, and then P and S on one and two. So E is eliminated, leaving D is our answer for number 14. Next, number 15. If both grammars are on the same shelf, what could be true? So first, let's find where we could have the grammars both on the same shelf. Doesn't happen in the top possibility where F and H are split. In the second possibility, F and H are split there as well. But in the third possibility, we have F on 3. We could have H there as well. So we're going to make H be on 3 and make W be on 2 for this particular question. That way, we have both F and H together on three, both of the grammars together. Now they're asking what could be true. Could we have P on three? No, P is on one or two, A is eliminated. B, novel on one? No, we have a monograph on one, so B is eliminated for 15. C, both novels on two? No, of course, we're going to have V on three. We only have one of the novels on two, W. So C is gone for 15. D, Farsi on 2. No Farsi specifically on 3 here. So D is gone, leaving E by elimination. Now if we look at E, P on 1. Yes, of course that could be true. We could have P or S on 1. P on 1 is a possibility, so E is our answer for 15. Next, number 16, general must be true question. Must we have a monograph on 1? No, we could have a novel on 1. V, so A is eliminated for that reason. B, no more than one novel on each shelf. Well, could we have both novels together on the same shelf? Yes, that could occur in the third diagram. We could have V on three as always in that diagram, and we could have W on three as well. So the novels could be together. They do not need to be split. B is eliminated. C, F and H separated. Must they always be separated? They're separated in the top possibility and in the second possibility, but for the third possibility, we could have H on three along with F, which is there. So for that reason, they do not need to be split and C is eliminated. D, S separated from W. Must they be separated or could they be together? They could actually be together in any of these three possibilities. In the top possibility, W's on three, S could be there. In the second possibility, W's there, S could be there. In the bottom possibility, W's on two, maybe, and S could be on two as well. So they could be together. They do not need to be split. D's elim eliminated. E, W not on one. Is that a must? Yes, it is. We always have one of V, P, or S on one, as I established at the very beginning of the game. We're only going to have one of V, P, and S on one, never W. So E is our answer to 16 by elimination, as well as for that reason. Next, number 17, if F is not on 3, what could be true? So F is definitely on 3 in the top possibility, so that is irrelevant. And in the bottom possibility, F is always on 3, so that is irrelevant. We're only considering the middle possibility, and we're specifically saying that F will be on 2 in this question, and H will be on 3 in this question. So the only ambiguity that remains now is is P on 1 and S on 3, or is S on 1 and P on 3? We do not know that, but this is actually very limited now. So what could be true is what they're asking us. 
Could we have P on two? No, P's on one or three, A is eliminated. B, H on two? No, we specifically established here that H is on three, so B is eliminated for that one. C, S on three? Yes, that could easily happen. S could be on three, P could be on one, so C is our answer. I will go through the rest though. D, V on three? No, V has to be on two in this case. D is eliminated. E, W on two? No, W specifically on three in this case. E is eliminated, leaving C as our answer. Next, number 18. If H and P are on the same shelf, what must be true? So this could happen in a variety of possibilities. I'm just going to establish specifically what we're dealing with. H is specifically on, the t on two in the top possibility, so P would have to be with it, forcing a S to go on three within the top possibility. For the middle possibility here, H could be on either two or three, but specifically, we need to put it on three in order for P to go on three with it, forcing F to go on two in this case, and forcing S to go on one in this case. In the bottom possibility, H will have to go on two in order for P to go with it, forcing S to go on one, and forcing W to go on three. So all three of these poss main possibilities are still relevant, although they have all been limited further based upon the, the questions then for 18. So now they're asking us what must be true. We can simply look across all three possibilities. Must P go on three? That happens in the second middle possibility here, but specifically P will have to go on two in the top possibility and go on two in the bottom possibility. So for that reason, A is not a must. B, Vonnegut on two. We actually, of course, have Vonnegut on one, two, or three for each of these possibilities. So Vonnegut is not limited to, to two and B is eliminated. C, S on two. S is actually on three in the top possibility, one in the middle, one in the bottom. So of course, S does not have to be on two. It actually does not happen in any of these. C is gone. D, S on one. S on one occurs in the second and third possibilities, but not in the top possibility. So for that reason, D is eliminated. E, W on three. Yes, that's happening in every single one. Here's W on three, W on three, and of course W on three. W on three occurs in every single one of these. So for this reason, ease our answer to number 18.